financial aid is real important for folks in diverse populations to go to college. In Tennessee, we have a, uh, a lottery that's dedicated to higher ed, and part of the lottery is merit-based, and some of it's need-based. How important is it for these scholarship programs, and if you have them in Ohio and you're familiar with them in other states, to be need-based uh, in addition to merit-based and, and getting students that opportunity to go to college? Uh, I don't know who should go first. Maybe Dr. Moore, because you're at a, I know you're at Ohio, the Ohio State University. Well, <laughs> uh, as you all, you know, Ohio State is a land grant university, and, and stand true to that mission. Our president, uh, Michael Drake, has made it as a major part of his platform is uh, to make college more affordable. In fact, I'm proud to say Ohio State is one of the national leaders, and so for every Ohio residence, we. We, we cover cost for tuition for every high school, uh, every Pell eligible student at Ohio State, and then it just went to our regional campuses. And that it is amazing. We've invested over $100 million into this, but I can say it's still not enough. What are the results that you've seen from that? Have you seen higher graduation rates? Oh, yeah. Our graduation rates is still on a vertical trajectory. But not only that, his, as our institution, historically, we've had a tension between land grant and flagship. We're both. And so our average ACT is a 29.2. And some alums will say, I couldn't, we became, we were open admissions prior to 1987. And so it used to be your birthright if you had a high school diploma in Ohio, you could go to Ohio State. But now it's more difficult to do that. But what we found is not only when you have students, they all have the capability, but they all don't come in with the same kind of supports and traditions in their families. And what we've done is we put a major emphasis in creating support structures for our students to ensure that they are successful. And so they won't, first generation college students oftentimes make unwise academic decisions, not because they're not smart, it's because they rely on the same people who just like them who had the same amount of knowledge. And what we try to do is to reach out to students early and we try to coach them up ongoing to ensure that they're very successful. But the financial piece is critical, but it's not the only piece because it only covers tuition. Yeah, let me just chime in here. I think it's critically important because for some of the students, it creates a choice for them studying versus having to work. So the scholarships, and you'll see my written testimony, uh, we have a project with the uh, ACES, which provides scholarships for our Native American students. And in doing so, that scholarship helps them in a couple of ways. One, they get paid internships at Intel, but also because they're having the paid internships, they're not having to really choose between studying and also having to work, so it's critically important. Dr. Malcolm, please. Let me say that sometimes the amount of money that we're talking about is not really a lot. It's not necessarily just the cost of tuition. It may be that, in fact, that students need book money, but they don't have it at the time, in which case they, def they delay getting it, getting their books, until they can earn the money or whatever it is in order to do it. Well, that puts you behind. And there's also an increased number of students who are, in fact, employed, working full time, who are also trying to go to school. And that's a more difficult road to, to, road to hold. I uh, am a regent at Morgan State, and I chair the Finance and Facilities Committee. So I see the kinds of things that come across about that can really stop students right in their track for lack of $500 for the books or $1,000 to be able to become financial. Uh, so it's, it's really a, a, a very critical thing, but needs to be looked at across the board. Thank you. I, I might just add that to the point that several have made, also many institutions are experimenting with having emergency funds available. I mean, for many low-income students, um, books, other critical needs for an education can be out of reach because they have to spend money on repairing their car because that's the only way they can get to school or they have to spend money um, to, on their family. So having emergency dollars available out of the financial aid office is also um, a really effective strategy. Right, have you, you noticed May, any? 
Yes, Dr. Jones. I just wanted to add one thing. There is this romantic notion about working your way through school, <laughs> and people have done that. But the reality is that it is not necessarily fair when those students are working and in classes with people who do not have to work their way through school. And our responsibility as a nation is to make sure that people have access and opportunity to develop their talents that we're going to need, all of us, in the years to come. I, I, my time's up, but I thank each of you for testimony. And it's what I, you know, we need to have more need-based scholarships and people understanding that if you give people a step up, it's real important not only for them but for the whole society. Thank you. Thank you.